Mary Ada, Executive Director of the Ghana Integrity Initiative. Where are we with the corruption fight with OSP AG Yoko in Limbo? Madam, thanks for joining us. Good morning. Good morning, Bernard, and good morning to your listeners. I just spoke to Mr. Sami Dakun, Director of Strategy and Communication at OSP, and he doesn't understand why the Yoko would even write to the AG to ask for advice on an investigation that he believes is Yoko's mandate. He also doesn't understand why the AG will tell Yoko not to do an investigation. Where do you sit on this matter? <laughs> it's interesting the way our institutions are using the law and the policies within their remits to stifle uh, investigations. It's, it's, it's really, really sad. I say it's sad because the OSP went to Yoko as a whistleblower. If I take that, I, I haven't listened to Sami, so I'm not too sure about that. But if the OSP went to Yoko as a whistleblower, then the intention is that they, they would have given some semblance of information to Yoko to work with. And Yoko would have started an investigation based on the whistleblower concerns that's what the law says and it's plain so it's interesting that yoko decided to go in for the advice of the attorney general based on the information they had received uh, we have said consistently that we believe that yoko could have done more uh, per the money laundering act yes you can do a lifestyle audit and that lifestyle audit would be premised on some of the issues that uh, Sami mentioned, the inconsistencies of information received. We also have the issues of tax. Then the issues around the business transactions and the persons who businesses are being registered to, and yet monies were being paid into a certain source. That alone is suspicion enough for me. The ordinary Ghanaian who is not a lawyer, that if somebody has registered a business, monies that accrue to that business should go to them. And so if there is any diversion, you realize that tracing the money, it goes to a certain somebody consistently. Then I believe, Bernard, from our ordinary perspectives and reasoning, we believe that that should have triggered a lifestyle audit of sorts. And so after that, if Yoko still had issues, then they could have asked the attorney general after they have investigated. But I think that it's, it's sad that they didn't do that. If they had done it, then we wouldn't have issues with Yoko at all. And then also for the OSB, I believe that when Yoko wrote to them, they had every opportunity to then have submitted the report of their investigations, which alluded to the issues of money laundering. Let's not run away from that fact. If well, Sami claims, claims that they sent a redacted version of the report in that twenty in that docket. So he says that the original report is an FBI report, but the version that they had was a redacted version, which he claims in the interview I had with him that they made available to the, the was made available to the Ioko, if I'm not mistaken. That's what he said. So Bernard, what 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 prevented the OSP from giving them the bigger report? Perhaps maybe seeking authorization from the FBI to share, because these are two investigative bodies. So why do you do a summary when you have the bigger reports, if it is available? That is the question we should be asking. And now Yoko is saying they didn't give them information. And remember, money laundering should be predicated on some uh, uh, crime to be able to be investigated, as they have said. And the attorney general in his write up or advisory has said, you need to pin the person down on something. And so if your report has identified those areas, why didn't you give it to Yoko to ease their... Well, he, he claims they and did. He, 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 claims, he claims that 
the tax inconsistencies, the inconsistency in the work of the deceased brother and the income uh, reported, and the inconsistencies in the uh, witness of the woman in the U.S. who supposedly sent the money, are three bases for a predicate offense which they believe Iyoko should have continued and investigated. This is what he said to me in the interview. Bernard, so you are conducting an investigation and you, you identify that you have challenges. You ask the person who has given you the whistleblower complaint to give you the information they have. And then you do not respond to the person. That's, it's, it's not, I, I don't know how, but I know that they have a working relationship. And so that is how come they would have submitted these documents. And Yoko is saying from their side that they did not receive any feedback from the OSP in this regard because the information they gave them was not enough. And so as a whistleblower who wants this issue to be dealt with, then you assist to ensure that it facilitates the process. Now we cannot say that Yoko doesn't want to do the job. Yoko is saying that they wanted further information to be able to do their job, which the OSP didn't give. We are not saying that Yoko has done the right thing, but in that report, I believe that some of the excuses given by Yoko wouldn't have been given, and they can go forward. And I, I heard uh, you when you said that it's not a, a lost cause, because I remember in the first instance, the Attorney General had already asked the police service, Ghana Police Service, to do an investigation into tracing the sources of the wealth. So that's one that is ongoing. But I believe this is not a dead case for Yoko. They can go back to deal with the issues around money laundering and the lifestyle audit, which is called for in the Money Laundering Act Section 1, 3 of it. Wonderful. So you believe that at least there, there could still be some uh, further investigation done? Because when I read the CDD statement, they basically said it's fait accompli. Listening to the AG, they believe that the case has been closed. From the GIR perspective, do you still think anything will come out of this matter? You see, it, it begins to give the impression to some of us that they, 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 there is something we are not being told. Everybody is trying to shift the burden to the other. And that is not fair because if it were myself or you, Bernard, people would work. Yoko would set up. They would do suspicious transaction tracing. They would work with FIC if it was necessary. So the impression is being created that some people are untouchables. And so if we do not want to touch them, we shift the burden to the other and we shift until we give it to those who we cannot do anything about. That is the impression and I am, I believe that's why CDD is saying this is a done deal. And uh, let me add that they would be saying it's a done deal because it's increasingly becoming apparent that since the president already indicated that he had no reason whatsoever to doubt the lady, the, the processes have worked in that instance to ensure that it justifies what the president says. Uh, and that is one of the very unfortunate instances. I believe that state agencies who are presumed to be independent must move away from allowing such to happen. And so for me, I believe that so we can redeem ourselves because the opportunity still exists. Thank you, Mary Ada. Thank you, Mary Ada, for talking to us. That was the executive director of Ghana Integrity Initiative, Mary Ada.